friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new, if you are new, my name is Kay, hello. And I am on the floor of my office, which means it is a chit chat, sit down video. We're gonna talk about some stuff today. I wanted to do this video for a while and I think um, it's gonna be really helpful if you are in your 20s and you're having like a quarter life crisis or if you just wanna sit and chill with me for a while and talk about some like life stuff strap in, grab yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, a water, whatever you got. And we're gonna talk about things, 20 things I wish I had known in my 20s that I now know in my 40s that helped me just chill out, get along, not worry, and uh, make my life much easier. So if you are in your 20s and want a cheat code, keep watching this video. <laughs> so there are a lot of things that I've learned about life just from having life experience that you can't just know when you're younger. Uh, fortunately, you do have to live some of your life to learn some of these things, but you can get some perspective on what happens when you're older. Like a lot of things I worried about in my 20s, I don't care about anymore, uh, just because either it's not worth it or I'm, you just don't need to worry about it anymore. I often have that feeling that I wish I could go back and tell my 20 year old self or you know, 21 year old self or 22 year old self, hey, chill out or, it's gonna be okay. Um, and I'm still like getting past a lot of things that I went through in my 20s and 30s and even in my 40s. Some of the stuff I even learned as re frequently, re frequently? Some of the stuff I even learned as recently as like a few months ago or last year. So we're still learning, we're still evolving. You should always be learning, which is like one thing I don't talk about, but always be open to learning and changing um, throughout your lifetime, otherwise, why exist, it's boring. Um, but here are 20 things I wish I knew in my 20s. Number one, most people on earth are good. They just are. My hypothesis is that most people are good and the amount of news we hear about people, people doing bad things, those are the people, the attention seekers, those are the people that are allowed. We have a thing in our brain that is like negative bias. Like if there's a bear over there, we need to be more concerned about the bear over there than about the little rabbit that's so cute over there. We pay a lot of attention to people that do seemingly bad things or you know, are what we perceive as bad. Um, but I feel like those people in the grand scheme of the world, they're not the majority. In my experience, I have found that most people are good, friendly, wanna help you, aren't judgmental of you. I believe at the in my core that most people are good. And if you go through your life with the expectation that someone you meet will be good, rather than going in and thinking that they're gonna be judgmental or bad and waiting for them to prove to you that they're actually good is I think a lot easier. Number two, this one's really hard, but I actually started to realize this very soon after I think I hit 30, is that bad stuff will inevitably happen to you. There's nothing you can do about it. Bad stuff will inevitably inevitably happen to you, people around you, people you know. It sucks, it's part of life, but you will get through it. I'm not saying you won't be traumatized by it. I'm not saying you won't be hurt by it. It won't create, it won't, I'm not saying it won't create painful memories, but you will get through it. You may be different on the other side of it. You may be stronger on the other side of it. You may be changed on the other side of it in a way that you don't like, but you will get through it. You are astoundingly resilient and the amount of bad things that I've lived through is tremendous. And I'm always in the moment. It's very anxiety provoking. It's scary. It's horrible. But when you come out on the other side, you're gonna get through it. It's not gonna be great but you'll get through it, just know that. And in that vein, I must say that even though bad stuff will happen to you, the amount of stuff you worry about compared to the stuff that actually is realistically going to happen or could happen, it doesn't, it's not. What I'm trying to say is most of the stuff you worry about happening usually doesn't happen. I've found this throughout my entire life. I've always been a really anxious person. Like I am anxious. I've just, it's just the way I popped out. I, my startle reflex is always, we're ready to go. It's super easy to, to walk into a room and scare the crap out of me. Um, however, most of the stuff, most of the stuff, some of the stuff actually did happen, it's terrible. Um, most of the stuff though, I was worried about happening, 
did not happen. There's not a lot I can do about preventing some things, um, but I mean, there's things I can do to prevent uh, a few things that I have control over. Like if I don't want to fall down the stairs, I can hold onto the railing and be very careful. However, uh, there's a lot of stuff out of my control. And but, but most of the stuff you do, you worry about happening, just it, it, it doesn't happen. Now I'm not saying the chance is zero. I'm just saying it's most likely unlikely. Number four is mistakes are part of the human experience and don't feel bad or you're not a bad person or you're not a failure because you make a mistake. Mistakes are part of the human, I know, and I will caveat by saying unfortunately because I don't like making mistakes, but they are part of the human condition and there's nothing you can do about it. And I'm mainly talking about mistakes that have, you know, there's not a lot of impact if you make the mistake. Like if you say a wrong answer in class, that's totally fine. You're not gonna, it's nothing really bad is going to happen to you. Um, if you sing a wrong note in chorus, and that's me all the time, I raise my hand and acknowledge that I make a mistake. So um, by perhaps my biggest turnaround with this was, I actually got a job at the container store in 2008, and I don't know about the company culture now, but at the time, as part of our training, they were very, very insistent on telling us that making mistakes is okay and please tell us if you've made a mistake. And I thought that was so freeing because that it happened all the time. Like I would be, you know, at the register and I would press the wrong button and I'm like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? And I'm like, you know what? It's cool. I made a mistake. I'm gonna tell someone. And I would tell management and they would come over and help me and I would learn from my mistake and I wouldn't do the same thing over again. You know, maybe sometimes I would, but like I eventually I would learn. And I think that that is a really important thing to forgive yourself about. Mistakes are part of the human experience, even in mistakes that are like embarrassing. It's not, it's usually gonna be okay. So don't feel bad about yourself if you make a mistake. Number five, not everything created is for you. And that's total, that's fine. I think we are in a very weird part of our culture where we're very focused on what about me with a lot of stuff out there. Um, we, and I don't think that everything out there that is available for purchase, available for consumption in any kind of way, is for me. Like if I don't wanna watch a movie uh, because I'm not interested in it and it's not for me, that's totally, that's okay. It's for someone and I hope that they enjoy it. There's a fine line between like things not being for me and things not being inclusive. Um, there, there, there's a whole discussion there, but not everything out there is for you and that's totally okay. And in saying that, number six is you can't make everyone happy. As a former people pleaser, I can't reiterate this enough, is that you cannot possibly make everyone happy. Everyone is so varied in how, what they care about, what they like, who they don't like. Maybe you look like somebody who they, who hurt them in a, years before and it has nothing to do with you and therefore they don't like you that has nothing to do with you so just be okay with not making everyone happy i have found this out later in life because i have three youtube channels and oh my god if i got super upset i mean i used to get really upset when the comments started to get really nasty and mean and i'm like you know I can't make everyone happy. Mean comments used to really ruin my day. Oh my gosh, if I just talk less in my intros, maybe maybe they would be happy. And I, it just, I can't, I can't, I, you just can't make everyone happy. It's just not possible. Number seven, this one's really, really important to me. Regret is far worse than failure. Failure is uh, like, I guess, pretty subjective. Like you tried something and you didn't, it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to, or you didn't succeed, but the things that I regret not trying are is so much more painful to me than things I tried and did it succeed in or it didn't finish. Like I um, went back to school after I got a master's degree for, I went to a post-baccalaureate medical careers program uh, like at night and I, w I really wanted to be a veterinary medicine doctor veterinary medicine doctor i bet i wanted i really wanted to be a veterinarian specializing in like equine medicine i really wanted to do that uh, because my parents were doctors i thought maybe i was like yeah, it's got to be in my blood and i went through 
two and a half years of school at night. I worked at vet hospitals. I shadowed the vet. I was I was teaching horseback riding at the time, so I was kind of fully entrenched in this uh, path. And at the end of it, when I when it got time to apply to schools, I was like, you know what? I don't think so. Do I regret? All that time I spent in school, absolutely not. I learned so many interesting things. I learned about science, I did labs, I had a great time. I got to work at a veterinary hospital in which I knew, which I found out that it's not for me. It was, I found it to be depressing, stressful, just not for me. I didn't thrive in that environment, but I don't regret trying. I would regret if I was thinking about it for years and years and years and never did it. I would have never known my potential. So if there's something you wanna try, just do it. Just do it if you can afford to do it or if you have time, just do it. Don't even question it because if you don't and there's a time limit on it, you will regret it and it'll be much more painful to you than if you have not tried. I don't think that that time I spent at Harvard at night was a wasted time. I had a great time. I learned so many things and I made great friends along the way and I just discovered that it just wasn't for me and it made me the person I am today. So regret is way worse than failure. You don't want regret. In that same vein, <laughs> number eight, peaking later in life is not necessarily a bad thing. I am 47 and I have, I got my master's in singing when I was like 24 and I popped out of grad school and I'm like, yes, I am a, pro a professional singer now. I go out and do professional singing things and I was not ready. My technique was shitty. Um, I just wasn't ready to go out and audition. I had like holes all over the place and I just didn't have the fortitude for it. And I just, I quit for like seven years. When I went back to it, um, I had a really, I had a struggle. I struggled. I struggled. I went out, went out to auditions and I didn't get much of anything. I got a few things, but not much of anything. And I found it really difficult. But after years of like trying to like line everything up, get everything together, couple years out doing a lot of professional work, I feel like I have pretty good momentum now as a professional musician and I'm doing the kinds of things I really wanted to do in my late 20s, now in my late 40s, and sometimes when I think about it I'm like, oh, you know, this should have been 10 years ago. I was exactly where I needed to be 10 years ago. You're exactly where you need to be right now. Whenever you peak or whatever you per perceive as peaking is whenever you peak. If you are 40s, you've still got a long way to go. So right now I'm like, yeah, it's okay that I spent all that time before doing other things and having so much fun exploring other parts of my life that I can bring all of that to my music work now and it makes it so much more fulfilling and I have so much more confidence going out there and being like, yes, I have all of this experience. And before I would have been going out there and doing stuff, but feeling like I have to prove myself all the time and all that stuff. And it's just so tiring. So whenever you peak is whenever you peak, you're exactly where you need to be right now. Number nine is motivation will never come to you. This is a really hard one I've had to learn. I have been one of those people who will be like, oh my God, I gotta wait till I feel like doing stuff to, to do it. I gotta wait till I feel motivated. I gotta get ready to, no, just get off your ass and do something. You don't have to do like the whole thing of the thing you're needing to need, needing motivation to do. You just have to do like one part of the thing. You may get momentum to do the rest of the thing, but the most difficult part of doing things or starting things is starting things. Motivation to do the thing for me never comes. Oh my gosh, Clover, hi. Clover never feels motivated to do anything. He just does it, right buddy? You just do the thing, yeah? Okay, you wanna sit in my lap? You can do that. And in that vein, number 10, is it number 10? Yeah, change is pretty uncomfortable and will never not be. <laughs> Anytime you want to make a change in your life, whether it's like you want to exercise more, eat better, do more, be more productive, you know, dress better, all that stuff, it's never going to be comfy, cozy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. It's going to be a pain in the ass. It's going to be inconvenient. You're going to want to quit. 
just accept it. That is the only way that I've learned to get through any kind of change ever is to accept and realize that it is going to suck. But the other side of it, you're gonna be great. You're gonna be great. I started exercising and now I'm like, yes, let's get in shape. Let's like build these muscles and like before, but starting to work out, girl. You had to twist my arm every time that little workout a notification came up. I was like, oh. but now I'm like, you know what? Just do it. Just do it. It'll be over. It'll be, it'll be over and you can move on with the rest of your day. And that is what I have to keep telling myself. Every time I want to change, I'm like, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good, but I'm just going to do it. And so once you get comfortable with the fact that it's going to be uncomfortable, it's, you just, it'll make it kind of easier in a weird way. Number 11 is stop and look around because life is really short. And I'm not just talking about um, in, your in your house, right, have a stop and look around, you know, things in your office are pretty cool, maybe. But if you're outside, if you're outside, just stop and look around. T put your phone down, put your phone, not, not right now, and stop and look around. Look at the trees, look at the sky, look at the bugs on the sidewalk, look at that little dog walking across the street. Look how cute he is. Look at that little, cute kid, look at that couple holding hands across. Just look around. Life is really short. The older you get, the faster time, the faster you perceive time is moving. And this is not an exaggeration. I feel like a year is like, boom, it's over like that. It's nuts. Stop and look around. Um, to make time go a little slower, you should make your life like very, very interesting. Um, so people who like travel a lot are always seeing new things. I think time is moving slower for them, but for the rest of us who don't do all that traveling or is life, life's not super exciting, um, time's moving pretty quick. So take a moment, stop, look around, appreciate it, take some deep breaths, and then go on doing what you're doing. In that, there is a, a method or a, like a method of thinking called 10, 10, 10, which is gonna help you gain proper perspective on whether or not the thing you're worried about or stressed about really matters. Because I'm gonna tell you, at age 47, some of the stuff I worried about, actually a lot of the stuff I worried about when I was 27 doesn't fucking matter. 10, 10, 10 method is, will it matter in 10 minutes? Will it matter in 10 weeks? Will it matter in 10 years? Just that perspective alone can make you stop and go, maybe it doesn't matter if I wear this skirt out or not. <laughs> Number 13, this one's really good. This one's really, really good. The, mo the moment you realize this, your life's gonna be so much easier for you. No one knows what they're doing. <laughs> We're all just making shit up. Everybody's making shit up. Everybody is making shit up. No one knows what they're doing. When I was a kid, I used to think grown-ups had their, they had their shit together. They like knew exactly what they were doing. They paid all their bills on time. They voted. They, you know, you teach math. They were all perfect in math. They could spell every word correctly. I still, at age 47, I cannot spell restaurant for the life of me and I don't know what it is. Everyone's kind of making stuff up. Now, I know what I'm doing mostly when in my work and a lot of us kind of know what we're doing, like we've had it life experience or we've been educated, but really, if like an expert sits down to write a book, they don't know what they're doing. No one knows what they're doing. No one knows what they're doing. So with that, I encourage you to just do what you want to do. Just sit down, just start doing whatever you want to do. Cause no one, none of us, we all are just making stuff up. It's weird, it's, free. it's freeing though. It's freeing though. Number 15, no, number 14. I'm taking one out. Hold on, let me do this. Number 14. And if you're very self-conscious, this is gonna make you, feel, make you feel really much better. Only a few people out there, like if you're in a crowded place, are really looking at you and judging you as much as you're judging yourself. Otherwise, no one really cares. Everyone is so busy, focused on their little universe, their se themselves, that no one's gonna notice if like your flies open usually. Usually your friends might notice. Um, but not everyone is looking at your fly down. Actually, a lot of people are like this with their eyes and heads in their phone. They're not giving a lick about you. So 
Um, don't worry about what other people are thinking about you or judging you for. They're not really concerned about you. They're always thinking about themselves. Number 15, people that disrespect you uh, are not worth your time and energy. That's it. And I mean disrespect you in ways that you may not think are disrespect, but are disrespect. People that don't respect your time, people that don't respect your talent and hard work, people that don't respect your personal boundaries, people that don't respect what you do, people that don't respect the person you are. And this refers to friends, coworkers, especially romantic partners, people that do not respect you or that disrespect you are not worth your time and energy. There are so many more people that are going to be respectful of you, treat you with kindness, uh, that are way more worth your energy than some somebody that like calls you names or says that you don't work hard or whatever. All right, while we're talking about people who disrespect you that aren't worth your time, um, number 16, I wrote, hindsight is 2020 when it comes to your great loves and heartbreaks are often a blessing in disguise. <laughs> this one's hard. This one is really hard because when you are in your 20s, I know that there is a whole, there's a lot of emotion around heartbreak and breakups and uh, romantic partners and being in love and all that. And I've learned as I've gotten older and had more experience with people that often, and I'm, I wanna even go as far as saying almost always, heartbreaks, that you may experience um, where you have been the one who has been brokenhearted, uh, those are a blessing in disguise, that you dodged a bullet. Very often these situations are heartbreaking and I'm not taking away the pain that you get from these experiences, but in my personal experience, after heartbreak there's always someone better on the other side. There's always a better life experience on the other side. And when you leave a situation, sometimes you realize it was holding you back in a kind of way, or it was unhealthy for you, or it was just bad all around, and you're better off now than you were when you were in the situation. I've never experienced anything different, even as far as I'm gonna say 30 years out from a heartbreak, I realized 30 years later, and I'm not gonna go into details, that this person that I was so heartbroken over was actually a really bad person. <laughs> I dodged the biggest bullet on the face of the planet, and I am so grateful that I did not end up with this person, but for years, I was convinced that it was like, the, the the one that got away that just so heartbroken over it was the perfect it was just wrong time wrong place da, da, da. Mm -mm. so if you're feeling really heartbroken now you go through that you process it you feel it and you move on you come out the other side and the more time that passes the more that you have experiences with other, with other people and other other relationships the more you may realize that that one that you were crying over last year Number 17 is there's room for everyone, even in a saturated field. This is so hard for me and I have to keep telling it to myself because I am a soprano in a classical music field. <laughs> if that doesn't make any sense to you, there's a lot of um, voice types in the world. Um, you know, there's basses, baritones, tenors, counter tenors, mezzo sopranos, uh, people who are true contraltos, uh, and sopranos, but there are different kinds of sopranos. It's a very nuanced kind of thing, but I can probably safely say that there are more sopranos than any other voice part probably trying to get work in the United States, even in, in the world, I'm gonna, t I'm gonna be bold as to say, there are more sopranos than any other part. And so for a while I was thinking, damn, I have to be exceptional to get work and when I'm getting work, I think, oh my God, I'm so replaceable. I better not get sick because I'm a soprano. However, that, I'm not saying that's not true. It is true. But I have to remind myself that I have something that none, no other soprano has. 
that is my own unique voice. I'm the only soprano that sounds like me. And maybe whoever wanted to hire me wanted to hire me because of what my voice sounds like. No other voice sounds like me because no one else is my shape, size, habits, whatever. And sometimes I had to keep reminding myself that they hired me. They didn't just hire a larynx not attached to a person, they hired me. So there's room for everyone to thrive, even in a saturated field. Number 18, this is not shocking. Tell people you, that you love that you love them and tell them often. I'm not gonna talk a lot about that, but you should do that. People should know that you love them. You should tell them, even if it's not a romantic love. I used to think that you can't tell people you love them if it's not like a romantic love. Maybe that's a change now. I think culturally that's a little different. Like you can tell your best friend that you love them, but you should tell them that you love them. Just do it. They should know. Number 19 is being yourself is way easier than being a fake person that's not you. And it gets easier when you, as you age, it just gets easier. If who you are isn't harmful to other people, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Um, it, but is like different than, you know, the typical experience that you may see out there. Um, that, that's really hard. That's really hard. I know I grew up and I was kind of a nerd, but I mean, a lot of us were, uh, but I was into a lot of things that other little black girls were not into. But I didn't really see an option where I could be someone else. So I just continued to be me. And even though I got teased for it and blah, 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 I was just like, well, what else am I going to do? I'm just going to be me. And you know what? It gets way easier as you age to continue to be you. Now, kids are mean. Kids are mean. I know that. But I'm talking to you in your 20s. I know adults are mean too. Continue to be the person you are. Again, if it's not harmful to other people around you or yourself, just be you. It's way easier to be you than to pretend to be someone you're not. That's just a lot of work. Who's got time? Last, but certainly not least, I wish I could, I really wish I could tell myself this. I wish I could jump through a time warp and really like shake myself. Take care of yourself now. Not only take care of your mental health, because I think that's really important is that you take care of your mental health. If you can afford it, go see a therapist or at least talk to a friend about uh, your feelings. If you're having, you know, negative feelings or you need to express yourself, but take care of your person now. Do right by your body now. Because you can do a lot of damage between your 20s and 40s. Now, luckily, I was pretty good at taking care of myself. I got into kind of a bad way uh, in my early 40s, but take care of yourself now. If you make one good decision every single day, you're gonna wanna make more of those decisions. So I really wanna in, like implore you to take care of yourself now. It is so hard to start exercising in your 40s. I'm gonna tell you right now, it is really hard because um, things are not the same, but you'll be a lot grateful because when 10 years pass and I'm like 57, I'm gonna look back at this video when I'm 47 and I'm like, damn, I looked good then. And I wish I was in, I wish I felt like I felt then. So just keep that perspective, take care of yourself now. All right, I hope this video was inspiring or at least fun and chill to listen to. I didn't finish my cappuccino, but I hope that you enjoyed. If you are watching this and you're in your 20s, let me know which one resonated with you the most. And if you're in your 40s or 50s, 60s, or even your 30s, if you're older, let me know which one you resonate with the most. Cause I, a lot of these, I just learned like recently and I'm like, girl, chill out. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.